All right, this video is going to show you how to do genetics problems with blood type. Blood type is um, genetically inherited through codominance. And what codominance means is that more than one allele is expressed simultaneously. So with blood type, um, there are four phenotypes for blood type. The four phenotypes are type A, type B, AB, and O. Now there's also positive and negative, so you can be A positive or A negative, but we're only gonna worry about blood type. When you're looking at the different blood types, one thing that you need to know about A and B is that type A, which is represented by the letter I, um, since it's a capital I, that is telling you that type A is dominant. Type B also has a capital I, so it is also dominant. When it's present, it's expressed. Um, little i is the recessive form, and little i is for type O. Type O blood is recessive to both A and B. Now, the letter arrangements are a little complicated, so I'll show you a shortcut in a minute. All right, so if these are your phenotypes, that means these are your blood types. And what, what is um, being expressed when we talk about the phenotype? Type A blood cells, which are round, kind of with a little pinched in center. If you watch the amoeba sisters, they'll go over this. People who have type A blood produce a protein marker called an antigen and those antigens are found on the surfaces of white blood cells. And people who have type A blood have A antigens. People who have type B blood have B antigens. And what antigens do is they provide your immune system with a way of recognizing itself. So someone with type A blood their immune system will re they'll recognize these red blood cells as being self. Um, someone with type B blood, they will recognize the B antigens. The immune system will not, for someone who's type B, that person's immune system will not recognize A antigens and will reject that blood. If you are type AB, you have both markers on your blood cells. So your immune system actually recognizes both antigens. So if you're type AB, you could actually receive blood from someone who's type B because your blood cells, your immune system recognizes those B antigens. For type O, there's no antigens on the blood cells. So for this reason, since there are no antigens to be recognized by your immune system, someone who's type O can give blood to any of the other blood types. All right, now in terms of the genetics, an individual who's type A could be homozygous type A, meaning they have two A alleles, or they could be heterozygous for type A meaning that they can pass down the O blood type to their offspring because they have the O allele. Um, if you are type B, same kind of arrangement. You could be homozygous type B or you could be heterozygous type B. If you are type AB, you are expressing both alleles. They are co-dominant, so they are equally expressed. And the only genotype that you can have is one A allele and one B allele. So you got one allele from your mom and one from your dad. Type O is the recessive trait, even though it's uh, one of the most common blood types. Um, type O is little i, little i representing the recessive. Now I'm going to show you the shortcut that I use for Punnett squares to kind of get rid of those eyes. You can use the eyes if you want to. You should recognize them. But when you do problems and, and when I work the problems with you, I'm going to use the following genotypes. Type A could be two A alleles or an A allele with an O allele. This is just easier in a Punnett square. 
type B, we can write like this. They could be homozygous for B, or they could be heterozygous for B. Type AB, they can only be AB. And then type O, the only way you could be type O is to have two O alleles. So the O's are representing this little I, and the A's and the B's are representing the big I's. All right, so here's a problem. Let's say we have um, a parent who is type A. So we know that they at least have one A allele. And we're going to cross that individual with someone who's type B. And now I'm going to say both of these individuals' parents were type O, or mothers were type O. So if this individual's mother was type O, mother could have only passed down an O, so that means that the genotype of this A individual is AO. Same thing over here. If one of B's parents were type O, they are going to get the O allele, so they'll be heterozygous as well. And if we put this in a Punnett square to see possible blood types of the offspring, so we've got an AO individual, sorry, AO, and BO, we just split up the alleles. This offspring is AB, BO, AO, and type O. So they can have a child who's AB, B, A, or O. This combination will give you all four of the blood types. All right, now you're gonna go on and work some problems. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put this in here, so this might be a little bit of a long video, but I'll try to go fast. So we have the father of a child has type AB blood, the mother has type A. So we know that the father's genotype has to be AB. The mother is type A, so all we know about her is that she has A and then another allele. So we want to know what blood types can their children not have. All right, since there's two ways that the mother could be type A, we're going to need to make two Punnett squares. So this first Punnett square, I'm going to put the father here. And for the mother, I'm going to make her homozygous. That's one of the ways that type A could exist. So notice here I get type A and type AB with that particular mother. All right, now over here I'm going to put the father here again, and this time I'm going to make the mother heterozygous, meaning she carries the O allele. All Notice now I can also get a type B child. The only blood type that I won't see in the offspring for this couple, depending on what the mother is, is type O. Um, there's no way to get type O because this parent can't contribute an O. So none of their offspring could have type O blood, regardless of the mother. All right, now a woman with type A blood, so we know that she's A something, and a man with type B blood, we know he's B something, could potentially have offspring with what blood types? So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to make four different Punnett squares. So, for example, let's start with this parent. So this parent could be AA, or they could be AO. They could be homozygous or heterozygous. Um, this parent could be BB or BO. So there's two possibilities. Now, if I take this parent down here again, this AA parent, but this time put him with the BO parent, and take this parent down here and this time put them with the BB parent. So you have four different Punnett squares to work through. Um, it's standard just to put the A before the B and to put the O last. So if you notice, um, all of the blood types are represented here. In fact, in this cross right here, we can see that 
a type A individual and a type B individual can have children with all four blood types. So the answer to this one is the offspring could be A, B, AB, or O. All right. Over here, the mother has type A blood, so we know she's A something. The husband has type B blood, so he's B something. Their child has type O blood. So typically if we're going to draw in uh, children of, of this match, we're going to put the child down here. The only way you can have type O blood is to have two O alleles. To get two O alleles, this child had to get an O from this parent and an O from this parent. So we know that that's the parents. Um, the father claims his child cannot be his. So basically what's happening is the father has type B blood and he doesn't understand genetics enough to say that there is a possibility for him to have offspring that are type O. So we're going to use a Punnett square to prove to him or to explain how he can have a type O child. The way that he can have a type O child is if both he and his wife are heterozygous for that trait. So there's your type O child. So the answer for explaining is that if both parents are heterozygous, meaning they're both carriers of the O allele. All right, uh, mother has type B blood. Her husband has type AB blood. Their child has type O blood, okay? And remember, to be type O, you have to be OO. So the child would have gotten one O from that parent. Notice you can't get an O from this parent. This parent can only contribute an A or a B. So if you do that Punnett square, you will see in this instance, you cannot get type O so it doesn't work. The father claims that the child can't be his. Is he right? Yes, he's right. Because um, the father cannot contribute an O allele. All right, and then the last one, the mother has type AB blood. So here's the mother. Uh, the father has type B blood, and what we know, we've got to figure out what his other allele is here, and they tell us that his mother has type O, so his mother was OO. Since she was OO, the only thing that she could have contributed to her son's genotype is that O. So now you know that the father's genotype is BO. Um, what are all the possibilities of blood type for their children? They can have a child who's AB, they can have a child who's B, they can have a child who's A. They cannot have a child who's O. All right, I hope that helped. Um, be sure to do the Amoeba Sisters with that. You're not turning this in. This is work that you're doing so that you can work it on a test.